Hey everyone, Steve87 here, coming to you from my latest update. Uh, yeah, got some mail call stuff, so we'll do some box openings. Um, Want to show you what I've been working on, and then I've got a little demo for you as well. So let's get the boxes out of the way. Um, I assure you this will not take as long as Heath does. Um, this is a front range Thrall center beam car, and this is a Burlington Northern. So this car kind of came together over the past week or so. Uh, I say kind of came together because this car was a little bit of a lot to do with, okay? So the one of the problems is this is an old kit. So I had some brittle plastic that I had to deal with. Um, we're gonna weather over that and all. The other thing is just the trucks on them weren't that great. Um, and again, since the plastic was so old, I had some bitter pr plastic that I had to deal with. Overall, this went together pretty good. Um, this was all part of the bottom. This is a one piece here, one piece there. So you just had to put these on. These are actually several pieces to put back on there. And you can see here that they've got handrails and grab irons. Um, really kind of nice overall. I still have to put in the, uh, the lower grab irons, the little saddle ones. Um, put on the KD couplers and some steel wheels. However, the thing that was really bad about this model was these things. The instructions say that you're supposed to cut them apart so that they fit down like, let's see if we can get that in there, like that. Okay, that wasn't working. Those two just happened to be in such a great area that I could slide those down um, because each one of these corresponds to a reinforcing beam. So the problem was is on the bottom of the car, this reinforcing beam came right up to where those holes were at. So all I did instead was just glue these onto the side. Now understand there are 15 of these. Those were all individually had to be put in there. So, you know, the detailing's not that great down here. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to weight, weight this car a little bit more. I think I might put the weight in the load and I have to decal it. But that's one of the things that I was working on. And since I was working on that center beam, I decided to go ahead and start on these center beams, which are the black ones. Okay, and they're different because they have, they're the open style one. This was a little bit more difficult. I'm still working on it. The bottom still has to go on. It at least comes with a metal plate, so that'll give it some more weight, so I can run this either empty or full. Um, this one I think I'm just gonna run as a full. So these were kind of meddlesome trying to get this wall and this wall lined up in between all of these. So you've got four things that you gotta get in. Again, this is older, so it was a little bit brittle. Um, there's a center track in the middle of there that has to, um, that you have to fit things into, uh, had to kind of widen it or shorten these. So those came with a little bit of, of an issue. And now my next issue is the cross beams. Now, this is only a 63 foot car. So with it only being a 63 foot car, I'm only gonna be able to put in one set of cross beams. But these cross beams, although they're supposed to look sort of like that, right? They're actually supposed to be in the middle of these beams. So now I've got to go in and cut each one of those areas to make that 45 to make those two meet and then somehow put it in the middle between there. 
so that it all looks uh, more correct. And I got to do that on two. So that's my next little dilemma. So these cars have been a little bit hectic to uh, try to get together. But that's what I've been working on model-wise. Oh, the other thing, since these are the McKean models, I'm sorry, let me turn that over. Since these are the McKean models, um, they didn't come with the instructions. This is the instructions for this car, the Burlington Northern car, right? Which I have decals for, right? So that's pretty good. They came with instructions. This, you can see here, the McKean models instructions. Um, you know, reading them and all that kind of stuff, they're not that bad. Um, but these are the instructions that I got for it. Notice that's uh, opera windows. That's not the ones that I'm looking for. But this kit is easy enough to put together. It's just I'm really taking my time and I'm actually liking the way that they're coming out. They're coming out fairly well detailed. So that's what I've been doing in model building. I'm actually building two of these at the same time. It makes sense when you've got those to build them all up at the same time. Okay, so that's my model building. So let's move on and open up some packages. All right, so I'm gonna do the three easier packages. Um, and I say easier because uh, they're a little bit smaller and easy to take apart. Let me just get my knife. Okay, so these are some eBay purchases that I've gotten. Um, this is a vehicle from a girl with a computer, which kind of is uh, Lone Star's or Dan Goins kind of operation. So it's obviously going to be a vehicle. So let's see what we got here in this particular one. So as you guys know, I also collect a lot of HO vehicles. Oh, yes. So this was a win for variable um, Bush police cars, which came out pretty nice. So this will be neat. So I got two uh, law enforcement police cars. All right, you guys have seen those before. I got another fire department chief car, which that'll be good. Could always use more fire chiefs. Um, and a second fire chief car. So this gives me a couple of police cars and a couple of fire chiefs that I can use and do some things with. It's kind of nice. It's got the push bar. This is the DWI enforcement. So a um, couple of nice police cars that can go into a town. Because a lot of people forget that, you know, all the towns have police. Not everyone has just one type of car. Okay, so this one is from uh, Kansas. And again... I bought this, but I don't remember what it was that I got. Um, I have it down in my phone. I always keep track of all of my stuff, um, knowing that sometime it's gonna come in. But uh, work has been so stressful um, these last couple of weeks that it has just been really tough for me mentally to do anything. Okay, so this is this one right here. So this is kind of a cool car. Um, Again, since I do military uh, emergency vehicles and all, we'll kind of take this out of the package. This is uh, from Germany, Schukara, I believe. Um, but it is a German command vehicle, fire command vehicle. Okay, that's not coming out easier. But if you look at it, right, it's your basic RV, right? It's a Heimer RV. Oh, that's cool. It's even got uh, sunroofs and stuff like that. And it has what looks like to be a little bit of an interior. So I'm going to repurpose this and instead of one, one, two, like everybody else in the world has, I'm gonna, you know, change up some of these things, probably give it a new paint job and all that, and then use it as uh, a resting vehicle or a command vehicle for uh, 187th scale HO um, trucks. So that was kind of nice. I hadn't seen one of these before. It's a really nice heavy model. So that'll be kind of a nice little RV to change into a fire truck. Okay. So I have two big boxes here. This first box is from Yankee Dabbler. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty big. I think uh, I went on a buying spree when... I got this year's bonus. So let's see what we got in here. Again, um, my brain is kind of off on what I got. 
Okay, so let's get the box out of the way. Let's move you guys up a little bit. Oh, sorry about that hand. I'll edit that out. Move you guys up a little. And so, first of all, oh, we have, oh, yes, the bulk storage. I know this is something that I probably could have made myself. Um, trying to get the glare off of there. But this is that Walters kit for the bulk storage. This will come in kind of nice, uh, you know, for either my road department or something like that. So that's kind of a cool little building. That is nice. And then apparently they had some train cars on sale that I wanted. Oh, that's right. This was on sale. That's true. So this is the Atlas BLM, BLM uh, office, right? What's funny is uh, Puget Sound and Pacific actually have almost exactly the same building. I know this would have been easy to make and all that, but it was a, it was a steal for it. Um, so I got it. Now I've got my office building for uh, my PSAP railroad. All I need is my uh, little radio tower to go with it. So that's kind of nice. Okay. And then lastly, within this package, oh yes, these just came out. So these are the new Atlas Trainman flat cars. Okay. So um, they're the 60 footers and they're just brand new released. And I looked and I said, you know, I have a lot of different flat cars already. Um, so why do I need another flat car? But these happen to be very, very specific. Oh, got to put handrails on them. Okay. These cars are the 60 foot or 68 foot flat cars um, that are the Department of Defense. So we'll kind of come in here and go a little bit closer. So they had multiple road numbers of these. So these are DDOXs and it's really hard to find Department of Defense cars. But um, I got these. I do have military bases that are within my layout. Um, I've got a huge Navy base. I've got a submarine base. Um, there's a National Guard base that's within where the, the latest, where the layout would actually go to when I make my bigger one. Um, so these are really nice. Um, they've got the simulated wood deck and all the tie downs, nice wheels, and they're all the 68 footers. So I got all three of them because that's the number of road numbers that they have is three. Um, like I said, these were just released from Atlas. I'm sure people do some reviews on them. Um, I got the hand holds here. I actually have uh, handrails that have to go on someplace. I haven't quite figured out where. I guess they're going to be up in this area because uh, I don't see any holes on the deck. The deck is all plastic. Um, it's got good weight to it. This whole center beam here is all metal. Um, this is kind of plastic. The underbody, yeah, it's not that much there. Um, it looks like they come with... Uh, trying to see what they come with. True scale dimensions, uh, Accumate knuckle couplers. So we'll have to probably change those out. Um, they don't go down as well as to make the actual decks. And, uh, if you put poles in there, they actually don't have uh, an area for the poles, but, uh, the lettering on them and all that kind of stuff is really, really nice. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's nice to find some DOD things really, really probably one of the most underserved portions that we have is Department of Defense rolling stock. Um, it's not hard to find. I mean, it's hard to find. A lot of people can, can do stuff with it. And um, Herpa makes a line of military vehicles that can easily, easily go on. So those are the small items. Now we're going to get to the big box. Okay. Now, a few people have already done reviews on this, so I'm not going to do that. This box is from Diecast Masters. Okay. Bet you guys guess you know what it is already, because, of course, it is a pretty big box. 
Now, a lot of reviews have been done on this. So again, I'm not going to do a review. And as a matter of fact, after I take it out, I'm going to actually do the rest of the unboxing um, myself off camera. And then I will set up so that you guys can actually see what it is that we got. If you guys saw Roy's, mine says the exact same thing as 150th scale. This is not 150th scale. So, as everybody I'm sure has seen, and I know Artie wants to come to my house now, but I got the 660 diecast mining shovel. Okay, a lot of people have done reviews on this. Roy did a really good job on his review, so go to his channel, uh, Container Man 68, um, and you can go through the uh, unboxing with him. But we're going to go and show you how big this monster actually is. Okay, so hold on and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. So I was able to take it out of the box. Um, as Roy said, this has real steel um, legs. There's a lot of pieces on this. The movement's pretty good. They are a little stiff, but that's expected. Can turn the angle around. I know you guys are getting a nice top view. Um, you've seen the side view of this. This opens up. That's kind of nice. Okay. Now, there was kind of a question of how heavy is this thing? Because it is a very, very heavy model. So, oops. Of course, the thing turned off just as I was getting ready to put it on. Let's go in ounces, pounds and ounces. So this thing weighs in at a whopping 2.15 pounds. Not ounces, 2.15 pounds this thing weighs, guys. So this is a heavy thing. But I decided to show you guys what is the actual scale of this, all right? So let's go to the layout and show you. Okay, so I've placed the unit on the um on my railroad okay i had to take a building out of the way so that i could put it in there so let's see how this looks so if we look here this is a normal dump truck right um this is an rpa rps pickup truck and that's an international ho scale normal dump truck that you see on the road and then back there you see behind it which is really really close that's a Jeep 38, okay? So let's go see if we can take a little bit better shot of this. All right, so here, oh, sorry. Okay, so here I've kind of repositioned this a little bit more so you can see it a little bit better. There is the Jeep 30. So you can just see the size of it. There's the dump truck that just barely gets up to it. And in here, that's a 187th scale Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, so this thing is massive. Okay, so finally, what can you guys do with this thing? Well, you see here that this is kind of the hill that I've got. This would actually be used to take down the rest of that hill, right, to make it into rock. So over here, I just thought I'd let you guys show, show you. Sorry, I keep getting my finger in the way. Um, because of the position, it's hard for me to use a... Uh, tripod. So this is the Walters heavy loader. So you can see the heavy loader kind of almost works with this. It's almost a big enough scale that you can put it in there, but that's at least the size loader that you'd want to put with this. Over here, we have a Norscott 772 off-road dump truck which again is fairly well dwarfed, but could probably take two to three buckets of this. Um, and then finally, this is the Terex off-road truck that you can get from Walters as well and put that together. So this one, I mean, these two don't look too bad with it, um, especially if they're gonna be short run trucks or something. Uh, that would be kind of a nice way to go. 
Um, so you can use stuff that's out there already. There is one truck, there is a mining truck that's out there, um, but it's like two or $300 um, by custom craft modelers or whatever. Um, that's the all brass Caterpillar ones. But you can see you can actually put this on your layout. There are some available items out there that you can use with it so that it doesn't look so undaunting. So because I know a lot of people have saw it and they've seen the reviews, that there hasn't been a review next to anything that made any sense. Okay, so massive machine, really cool, finely detailed. It's gonna fit in for what I need it for, um, but I'll have to get some bigger trucks at some point in time, okay? This is Steve87 saying thanks for watching 